Welcome, everyone. We continue our series entitled League of Women Voters Empowering You, a program designed by the League of Women Voters in partnership with Dayton Access Television to provide unbiased, nonpartisan information on issues that are relevant to our friends and neighbors throughout the greater Dayton area. My name is David Bodery. I'm a member of the League of Women Voters and your host tonight as we focus in on our topic of empowering you changes to the voting process. Our guest today is Jeff Rezebeck. He is the director of Montgomery County Board of Elections. So welcome, Jeff. Thanks for having me and uh, to have an opportunity to speak about the House Bill 458. Absolutely. And it is exactly what we're going to be talking about. Many of you may not know that we have a number for the law that is enacted starting April 7th entitled House Bill 458, which essentially is going to be introducing a few, I think, minor, but I probably to you they're more considerable, uh, changes as it relates to the voting processes that we follow. Uh, what I'd like to do is get started where voters begin, and that is, is there any change based on this law related to the register for, for registering voters, for voters to become registered? Yes, uh, there are some slight differences in registering to vote. Uh, there is a new form uh, and it is available online on our website as well as the Secretary of State's website. So we're encouraging all, everybody, including our partners like the libraries, the Board of uh, the Bureau of Motor Vehicles, to make sure that they have the correct form. But on that form, uh, as you start to fill it out, it looks very similar to the old forms. But the important thing uh, that is the change is you have to include your driver's license number, your ID, your photo ID number if you don't have a driver's license, okay. or your last four of your social. You can no longer send in a copy with your registration uh, form. So okay. it has to be just one of those two uh, or three numbers uh, to provide. Okay, and, and as long as people understand that, they have opportunity to ensure that they've properly registered. What if a person was registered before without those? Do they need to re-register? No, if you are currently registered, you do not need to do anything uh, with regards to that unless you've moved uh, uh, your address here within the county or you've moved from out of the county into Montgomery County or uh, if you're viewing this and you happen to see it and you moved out of Montgomery County, right. make sure you register with your current Board of Elections if you've moved. Otherwise, if once you're registered, you're good to go. Uh, you don't need to do anything with regards to House Bill 458. Okay, good. So, all right, I go to register to vote, and I can do that at uh, the Board of Elections. I can do that at the Bureau of Motor Vehicles. I could even pick up the form at the library. Would I then need to mail it? Yeah, you would mail that into our office. If you did register at the Board, at the Bureau of Motor Vehicles, uh, they have online stuff that they click that. You can also register online, uh, but doing registering online, you have to have your driver's license number or your ID number plus your last four of your Social Security. So there is a restriction that you need all three of those, uh, or at least the two of them, the driver's license ID number together. So I'm going to channel my mother here sure. for a second and say, well, I'm not comfortable sharing too much information about myself. Is there one way that you feel might be the most secure for those people that perhaps are a little concerned about how this information is used? Um, the easiest way uh, that is probably really secure is, again, with the League of Women Voters and other organizations, uh, is to go to some of their drives that they do for registration. They are taught by us how to do the forms. Uh, and then they seal them in a form and deliver them right to our office. Okay. Or if you're uh, downtown, uh, you can come to the administration building, uh, 451 West 3rd Street, and you're able to drop it right off at my office, and we'll take care of it right there. Uh, we do have a drop box outside the back part of the uh, Board of Elections, the administration building, and if you are uh, downtown not wanting to get out of the car, you can throw it right in that drop box. It's a big white box right at the back of our building. And that's the same box that I might use if I want to submit an early vote, right? And I want to drop it at the, the voter drop box. Absolutely. That is the same box. If you've been down there, you know where it is. And that would be an excellent place to drop any of your absentee ballots uh, once you've completed them. Right. Okay, good. 
So, all right, I'm now a registered voter. <laughs> and so I've completed that process. Let's make sure, though, that I know how far in advance I need to become registered so that I will have the opportunity to vote at my next opportunity. Great question. Yes. The last day to register is the day before the first day of early voting. So for this okay. May election, the first day of early voting would be April 4th. Okay, so the last day to register for the May 2nd election is April 3rd. Uh, same thing for November. It'll be in an October timeline right. uh, for that. However, if you happen to register after that deadline, please do, because then you'll be all set for the next election. Right. Perfect. All right, so we're registered to vote. We did it in advance within the proper time frame. Uh, so now imagine that I'd like to participate in the upcoming May election. What are my options? I assume that in the past I used to be able to do early voting. I could mail in my vote or I could vote in person. Is that correct? Absolutely, and you can still do any one of those three. So then in what way might the law change how I approach those votes? Uh, the, the biggest change uh, for you is that it would be between uh, the ID, okay? And there are some changes. Those that are coming in to vote on early voting, uh, it is the same as uh, election day voting. So that's okay. a, the two, two different days. You do have 28 days to early vote right. uh, plus election day, but you will need your driver's license or state ID. Um, you can have it, and it can have either your an old address, as long as, uh, or the new, or the, your most current address, as long as you're currently registered at uh, an address here in Montgomery County. Um, you can. This is a change. You can use your military ID, and this is another big change that people used to talk about. You can use your U.S. passport. Oh. Uh, what you cannot use, and this is probably the important thing, and it wasn't well. Uh, it's, it's not, we don't see it a lot, but it's really important for individuals. You can no longer use your utility bill, a bank statement, uh, or uh, like a paycheck, a government check, uh, or anything like that. Uh, additionally, uh, uh, you, you used to be able to just give your last four of your social, or if you memorized your voter I, or your Ohio driver's license number, right. those are not acceptable anymore on early voting and or uh, election day. Okay. Now you do have that um, absentee ballot uh, voting, uh, and you do have to fill out an absentee ballot request form. Uh huh. That does require uh, either to have the Ohio driver's license number, uh, your ID number, or the last four of your social security uh, number. And then you can also, uh, this is a slight change from the in voting, you can do a copy of your ID. Oh but you have to have the front and back, and back of your state ID, or if you're gonna use your passport, we need the photocopy of the ID page on your passport. Let me make sure I've got that then. Sure. So you're thinking if I want to do a absentee mail-in vote, mm -hmm. I request my absentee ballot, yes. and in that request, I would have to include those either pieces of ID photocopied, mm -hmm. or I could include my license number, as long as I also included my social security last four of the social? No, you can have any, the, any, one, of any one of those Thank three, uh, the ID number, and we'll say driver's license or ID, or your social security number, or uh, a photocopy back in front of the ID, okay. or uh, the photocopy of the passport. And if I think about that, really this is all in an effort to try to ensure the security of the person voting is the person right, that we're, we're working with. So a photo ID provides some evidence that this really is me. Absolutely, and, and, and that's been the big push uh, here in the state of Ohio and, and from many of the directors and deputy directors, uh, boards of elections from around the state is to make sure, and our Secretary of State always talks about it, it's easy to register and easy to get uh, 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 there in the voting booth and that, but it, it's also hard to cheat. Okay. And this is one of those mechanisms that we really see it uh, take place and it's the, that we're really trying to ID that. Plus, uh, just to add in, uh, throughout the state uh, the last year, uh, prior to this law becoming uh, in place, we actually looked at, a lot of Board of Elections looked at who was, what was being used. Here in Montgomery County, it's about 98% of the voting public use their state ID and driver's license number already. 
So it is not going to affect uh, those individuals at all, and we just have to help out those that don't have an ID. And what the state did in this bill is, uh, if you do not have a driver's license and you're wanting to have the state ID, it is free for you. That's so important to say. So imagine a person in the past had used that maybe utility bill mm -hmm. or whatnot, uh, and they're like, oh, I'm not going to be able to use my utility bill anymore, so how do I make sure I can have a proper ID? I need to pick up a state ID. And so I can do that for free, and I could do that then where? At the BMP. Oh, okay. They're the ones in charge of all that. They will give out those free IDs. So that would include any BMV in Montgomery County. Yes. And there are a number of them, as I think about my own teenagers <laughs> who learned to drive, and we had options for where we might take our tests and whatnot. So I could choose whether it's West Carrollton or whether it's in, I suppose, uh, Centerville, wherever I decide I wanted to go. Absolutely, wherever there's one that's open. Okay. Just look at their hours to make sure you uh, arrive there when they're open. For sure, for sure. <laughs> All right, so... I've got my ID, or maybe I've chosen now to use my passport, which is kind of cool that I can mm -hmm. use that. I don't use it very often, to be <laughs> honest. So uh, maybe that'll give me another chance. Um, is there anything else that I should be aware of as it relates to my options to vote? Yeah, there's a couple of additional things. Um, with regards to uh, making the request for your absentee ballot, if you're choosing to request an absentee ballot, and we always encourage the public um, absentee ballots are increasing on usage because it gives the voter an opportunity to sit at home, look at those uh, candidates or issues, research them, and make a great decision however they choose. Um, but with the way the law is now implemented, um, you have to make the request for the absentee ballot seven days prior prior okay. to the election day. Okay. And there was a real reason behind sure. that is uh, the previous law said you could ask for it up till noon on Saturday before the election day. And the problem with that is that it's a, just a practical issue is that if you ask for it on noon on Sunday, I can't guarantee that, we'll, it, we'll guarantee that it'll go in the mail, mm -hmm. but I can't guarantee that it'll be delivered to you, you vote, return it, by the day before voting because on the absentee ballots you have to return it postmarked on the day before, before the, election. the election so on that monday so that's a big thing uh, to make sure that happens so why they moved it back that seven days is to be realistic about to the voter to make sure that they're having the opportunity now if you have your absentee ballot and it is monday night or let's just say you wake up and it's Tuesday morning and it is election day. Please still fill out that ballot, take it down to the Board of Elections and put it in our drop box right outside uh, as you're going into work or as you're coming home, as long as it's in that drop box by 7.30 on Tuesday. Now, you have to have it in the drop box. If it wasn't mailed and postmarked the day before, it is it's sad to say it's not going to count. Okay. So we're always encouraging voters to contact us if they have questions about that. Absolutely. And so I'm going to channel my mother again <laughs> uh, because uh, my mother isn't driving. And so uh, is it legal for me to uh, accept her absentee ballot and drive it with me with my own ballot to drop at the drop box? Yes. If you are an immediate family member, you're able to do that. Okay. Uh, you cannot um, go around the neighborhood right. and collect all those uh, ab potential absentee ballots. That is not appropriate. Uh, but if it's your spouse, your wife, uh, your kids, um, and that's the other thing. If you've got kids that are, uh, we always encourage this, kids that are college age mm -hmm. and they're able to vote, please get them an absentee ballot application. We will mail it directly to wherever they are. Uh, and if you're a snowbird that's late in coming back in May, we'll deliver it down. We'll, we'll send it in the mail as long as you give it enough time to respond. Right. And that's um, the key, right, in making sure that you've done it in advance far enough that you can get it and then get it back in a timely way. That's correct, because part of the other uh, law or the other part of this law with absentee ballots, we do have to receive it within four days after the election. Right. Now, there was uh, some uh, studies that went into that uh, simply because uh, we wanted to make sure we had the right time frame. 
And as boards of elections, we were counting uh, the day, you know, a lot of them come in on the election day because mm-hmm. they were mailed the day before or over the weekend or that Tuesday, that I'm sorry, that Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And you see a severe drop off of nothing on that following Monday. So that's where that four day come, came in. It wasn't just something picked out of a hat. It was, it was really looked at. So I appreciate that you've got an opportunity to kind of share that research because what I heard you say, two things really, 98% of our voters are using either their driver's license or their state issue photo ID, or uh, also, I guess I should say, those that are doing mail-in ballots are doing that in a, in a time frame that most everybody is going to be uh, unaffected, essentially, not, not have anything change as it relates to this law making some restrictions, but within reason. And that's a great summary of it. That's exactly right. We're, a lot of it, we're, it, it's being codified just to make sure that we have the voters uh, believe in our system and trust our system. Uh, so it is a great opportunity for that. So if a person does have questions, you suggested they could contact the Board of Elections. Is there an email, a phone number that you'd like to share for yep. that? Yeah, uh, I'll give you a couple things. Uh, our phone number down at Montgomery County is 937-225-5656. Uh, we have our own website, and you can respond to it. It's mc, and then the word safevoting.com. Okay. And that's directly to our website. Or you can go to voteohio.gov, which is the uh, state site. And all you have to do on that one, and this would be helpful to the surrounding counties, uh, you go in that website and you pick your county, and it'll take you right to you, your appropriate board of elections. Um, And we encourage anybody that has questions about uh, voting, registration, how to get to uh, a polling location, uh, how to uh, cast a ballot or how to get registered. Please give us a call. We've got a great staff willing to assist. Absolutely. And we know that we've got Greene County uh, members of the league as well as viewers that uh, may be interested. And so they can go to that vote ohio.gov website, find their county, and still uh, be able to uh, access the information for Greene County specifically. Well, that's really helpful. I'm imagining that there could be other changes that this law has enacted, either for citizens or maybe for the Board of Elections. Anything else that you want to share? Yeah, um, there are a couple things. I I will go back to the ID. Uh, Just there's some uh, some small exceptions that if you do not have your ID, you will still be able to vote, but you got to bring your ID uh, down uh, to the Board of Elections okay. within four days, and it's called our cure period. Yes. Uh, we'll be open for that. Um, additionally, if you have a religious objection to having your photo taken, uh-huh. uh, there is a form that you fill out, and that will be acceptable, so we're making those exceptions for everybody. Um, we also have uh, one of the things that was kind of more administrative for the boards of elections. I know the voters probably don't even realize this, but we used to have August elections um, and they weren't very well uh, attended. Uh, It was a very low turnout. You're talking in single digit turnouts. Uh, So we are, uh, with regards to this, we are no longer having uh, August elections. Those, you can have an August election, but it's for a fiscal emergency for a particular jurisdiction. Okay. And that's the only way to have an August election. And that gives us enough time and enough ability to um, make sure uh, that we're ready for any November elections and anything coming up. Right. Um, we do have uh, the drop boxes, uh, as that's always been a big debate. Um, uh, a lot of us wonder why, but uh, you can, we, each county is allowed to have one drop box, uh, and they need to be on the property of the Board of Elections. Uh, ours in Montgomery County is in the back. It's on uh, uh, Vista View is the actual road call, the name of the road. And that, uh, you just pull right up, put it right in. It does have 24-7 uh, videotaping, so it's secure. Right. Uh, there are a lot of lights out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is the big white box. There are two other uh, mailboxes next to it. And that's uh, if you're paying your taxes or you're paying your water bill. Those are the two things. Okay. Um, Early voting, there has been some change in early voting hours. Um, Right now, the secretary has uh, indicated uh, that uh, the early votings in week one 
Week two and week three are going to be from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And here in Montgomery County, that is at the Montgomery County Board of Elections, it is in our lower level of the administration building. Come on down. Uh, we've, got, uh, we've got such an efficient process that uh, from when you come into the building, I mean literally walk into the building, test, take the escalators down, your time to vote, get back up to the escalators and get back into the parking garage, plus you get free parking, um, is uh, like 12 minutes. Uh, oh, that's and even awesome. you know, and, and if we do have some lines, uh, which we do every once in a while, uh, we this past year uh, for early voting on some of the weekends, uh, we were able to get a special feed uh, that had no political commercials on it, and we were hosting <laughs> uh, the Buckeyes games that were, that were open during <laughs> on some of our weekend hours. But let me talk about the last week of voting uh, this year, um, because the important thing is we do not have Monday voting. Uh, there is no Monday voting right. this year. And so we had to put those hours of Monday voting to uh, the last week of voting. So what the secretary has set is that Monday is 7.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. Tuesday, 7.30 a.m. to 8.30 p.m. Wednesday through Friday then is also 7.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. And we still will have the weekend hours on that last weekend, 8 to 4 on Saturday and 1 to 5 on Sunday. Right. So you can still vote on Sunday, but the Monday is no longer a day that you can vote uh, at the Board of Elections uh, dropping off in advance. Have I got that right? That's absolutely right. And, you know, if you give me a second... It, 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 to explain why, why it was important. Oh, I was imagining that you've got to be relieved <laughs> because that day before Election Day it has to be nightmarish for the Board of Elections. Absolutely. We were doing uh, voting. Uh, it was, you know, 2, uh, I'm sorry, it was Until, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Right. And uh, most of a lot of times in, in like a presidential year and even a, a governor's year race, uh, it would be pushing to 3, 4, 5 o'clock of getting all those voters that were in line. Because mm -hmm. once you're in line, you, get don't, to vote. you, yeah. you, you can vote. Don't get out of line. Um, but um, then we have all that equipment that needs to get out, and our poll workers, our lead poll workers, are waiting for us to transition some of that information from early voting to our poll pads. Right. And that takes time, uh, a lot of manpower. And so uh, we were, many of the boards of elections, uh, and in demonstrating to the Secretary of State and a number of uh, state officials of coming to Montgomery County and seeing what we do and how we did it, um, it was just getting to the point of that breaking issue. And this uh, not having the ballot, uh, people voting on Monday is a good administrative thing. Right. Uh, people always challenge me, and I, you know, I, I, you know, and I'm not trying to be flippant about it, but people always challenge me and said, well, I'm a uh, procrastinator. So I procrastinated my early voting to Monday. And I said, you know, uh, to be a little, to get them laughing a little bit, I said, you know what? I'll give you the opportunity to procrastinate up until 729 on Tuesday p.m. to vote. And uh, they thought it was, you know, they're like, oh, okay. So uh, hopefully those voters uh, will continue to come out. Uh, it is important to hear uh, their voice sure. uh, when it comes to, to voting and how our local government your tax levies, everything else that's on the ballot, uh, it's really important to us. And down at the Board of Elections, I uh, have the privilege of being a part of a team uh, that's split equally between Republicans and Democrats. But I would gather a, a bet uh, that you couldn't tell when we're in pure election mode, you can't tell who's a Republican Democrat. They are a team that works for the voter and works for the county, and they do a great job and they make me shine. It is, it is an unbelievable team. Yeah, I appreciate that very much. And I, I knew when I saw the law change so that there was no voting on Monday in advance of the Tuesday election, that that was going to be a bit of a relief for the Board of Elections. <laughs> uh, and my assumption is that every county in the state has a Board of Elections office, is that correct? That is correct. So 88 Board of Elections throughout the state. Yes. And how many different I guess precincts, is that the right word? Would you have in Montgomery County then? In Montgomery County, uh, we have, uh, right now we have 150 polling locations. We have 381 precincts. Okay. And so what, wow. it, what we do, uh, and this is 
a, a year that we'll also have to live through again is the redistricting. That's got to be redone. Uh, we try and match up the precincts so they match up with uh, the uh, new districts for the state reps and the sure. senators so there's no kind of split precinct. Uh, we have a team that does that. They do a great job. Right. But it does take some time to get all of that out. And if I can have one last little plug about uh, a voting on Election Day, if you are interested in helping out with the Board of Elections, uh, poll workers, uh, whether you're a Republican, Democrat, or an independent, we need you out there helping the voters uh, pro get processed through, especially on Election Day. We do pay. It's not a lot uh, for the number of hours that you work. But I began, and this is the joke that we do all the time down at the Board of Elections, I began as a, way back when it was called the judge, uh, but as a poll worker, and you too can begin as a poll worker and maybe one day be director of the Board of Elections. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Jeff. We live in a democracy that at times can be, honestly, kind of messy, challenging, even polarized. Our democracy requires us to be engaged and active, not passive bystanders. It starts by becoming a registered voter and it continues as we educate ourselves to vote and then it relies on our active participation in those elections. So I wanna encourage everyone to not be passive but instead to be active in our democracy, again, uh, by participating every election. Um, I wanna thank our guest, Jeff Rezebeck. He is the director of Montgomery County Board of Elections. Uh, I've really enjoyed the conversation uh, I'm sure people are going to have questions, and so we're going to make sure that we've got some uh, resources available both through the League of Women Voters uh, website as well as here in the programming, so we've got some uh, links to websites that will be helpful to you. The League of Women Voters encourages everyone to participate in every election. If you have any further questions about this program or if you have ideas for me about upcoming programs, please contact the League by emailing league at lwvdayton.org. That's league at lwvdayton.org. Or you can call the office. The number there is 937-228-4041. Thank you for sharing your time with me. Thank you, Jeff, again, and everyone be well.